Wake the Dead with Sean McCann. Greetings, and welcome to Wake the Dead. Today's topic is tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough, but it needs to be done. Everyone needs to hear this because it is very important. Today we are talking about the modern day child sacrifice that is circumcision. I have notes. I'm going to be jumping around. It was tough to, to figure a structure for this episode. Just me today. No guests. Um, it's a tough topic to get through. So, and there's not much wavering what i will say is the truth there are no opinions which make my statements not true you listeners it is your task today to burn away your illusions and understand the truth that is circumcision. Brand new baby. What's that sound? Where's he going? Think of the experience from that baby's perspective. What is happening? Now we see the board. Circumstraint. And we see the tools. Poor young victim is tied down to the board. Restricted. Four point restraints. The child cannot run. He does not know what is happening. This movie, American Circumcision, is something that everyone. Circumcision is the most common watch. surgery in America. Whether or not you choose to learn about it, it's there, directly impacting the majority of American men in the most intimate way possible. This movie is entry level. I'm gonna bring you a little further. So we're not gonna spend the entire time watching this. But we will, we will jump into it if we need to. I think I, I'm gonna play a quote from some someone at the end this is tough it's, this is really tough for me for everyone but i can't even it's tough to say the words without crying please forgive me and walk with me down this path of understanding do no harm Circumcision fundamentally changes people forever. It took until the 70s 
the 1970s for doctors to recognize the fact that babies feel pain. Babies actually feel three times more pain than an adult human does. Their brains and their nerve endings, their nerve receptors are three times more potent. The dark occultists who push this practice onto our society know that fact. They also know what it does to the mind of the baby. The baby's body will heal. The baby's mind never does. Okay, the oldest circumcised body that was found in archeological digs dates back to 4,000 BC. Instead of sacrificing a child, they would sacrifice the genitals, which evolved into sacrificing the foreskin. Judaism adopted it from neighboring tribes. Forces, it forces babies into a culture it identifies them with. It bonds them to the others that have endured the same trauma. I'm going to read a quote from the book Marked in Your Flesh by Leonard Glick, page 61. In summary, the father offers his son's foreskin as a bloody sacrifice for what may have been a substitute for child sacrifice. He declares acknowledgement of paternity, readiness to submit the child to a perilous procedure, a vowel of sexual restraint of his own and his son in the future, intention to raise him as a conforming member of the male-centered collective, and in summary, offers his submission to the elder's will. Nineteenth century doctors believed sexual pleasure, especially masturbation, was not only evil, but the root of all physical and mental illness. It was well known that the foreskin was highly erogenous and facilitated masturbation. So the only reasonable course of action was to forcibly circumcise children. The famous crazy Dr. Kellogg wrote a book about stopping masturbation. He stated in quotes, circumcision should be performed without anesthesia so pain is associated with the habit we wish to eliminate. Would you give your children to that man? A lot of you out there are like, whoa, what is he talking about? It's just a little snip, makes it look better. Uh, I don't like an anteater dick. Ew, those are gross. Snip it. 
my body, my choice. Don't forget to snip his dick. You people disgust me. It is not your body to choose. People get all up in arms when somebody puts earring holes in a baby's ears. But they ask the doctor specifically to chop off the most erogenous, sensitive part of their newborn baby. The trauma of hospital birth is enough to traumatize the baby. What they do, it's a practice that has been, it has been practiced and it has evolved to do the most damage to the baby and the mother. We all understand that the owners, those that think they are the owners of our society are devolving us. They are destroying us. Circumcision is directly destroying our babies. Hmm. Destroying? What does he mean? Well, <clears throat> each year, more than 100 newborn babies die as a result of circumcision in the neonatal period. Sudden infant death syndrome is a term used to hide circumcision death numbers. Think about that. They want to hide the numbers to continue the practice of death. Where have we seen that lately? Hmm. Right. This is how it's done. This is how they murder people. Look around. <sighs> Baby boys die from blood loss, brain damage, and heart failure. Blood loss, brain damage, and heart failure. But some people think, oh, it's just a little snip. Or they think, oh, it was done to me. I probably should do it to him because, you know, I don't want to look different. Right? When a man does that, he's negating. He is choosing to not recognize the trauma that was done to his body. In so doing, he's traumatizing his son. The ignorance is so pervasive that the father chooses to destroy his son's genitalia. Infant foreskin is used in making vaccines. It's called fibroblast. It's a necessary component. Hmm. Trauma is a necessary component for vaccines. Let that sink in. All you vegans out there that still want to chop your babies. (sighs) 
using, okay. There was some nurses who had to witness hundreds of babies be put to the knife on this restraint board of disassociation and trauma. It disturbed them so much that they wanted to prove through scientific exploration that circumcision damages the baby. The nurses got together. One of the nurses whose husband wanted it done. It was going to be done anyway. So that nurse chose to allow it to be done in this scientific experiment. Using an MRI PET scanning to directly observe the effects of circumcision on the human brain, using an obsidian blade with no anesthetic, they cut the baby while he was restrained in the machine. Analysis of the MRI data indicated that the surgery subjected the infant to significant trauma. The greatest changes occurring in the limbic system concentrating in the amygdala and in the frontal and temporal lobes. A neurologist who examined the results postulated that the data indicated that circumcision affected most intensely the portions of the victim's brain associated with reasoning, perception, and emotions. Follow-up tests on the infant, one day and one week and one month after the surgery indicated that the child's brain never returned to its baseline configuration. The brain of the circumcised infant was permanently changed by the surgery. Dr. Paul Tenari, PhD, director of the Pacific Institute for Advanced Study. Psychological effects. Attitudes about people, life, and the future may be affected. Lack of trust and a sense of defenselessness. Victims fear their penis is deficient. This is widespread in our culture. Think about penis enlargement pills. Having a bigger dick is a focus of men who have been circumcised because they recognize subconsciously that part of it was removed. Negative body image impacts men in their lives. An aspect of self can be identified with the particular body part as masculinity is typically identified with the penis. When that part is wounded, there is often a corresponding psychological wound to the self and a loss of self-esteem. Low self-esteem often induces feelings of shame, and these are projected by attacking the self-esteem of others. Shame isolates us from others and from ourselves. The effects of circumcision trauma can be chronic and so deeply embedded that it is very difficult to distinguish them from personality traits. 
As with other traumas, the psychopathological outcome may vary, but preliminary reports appear to be consistent with the symptom pattern of post-traumatic stress disorder. They're putting the human race, the males, especially in America and in Israel, they're putting them in the state of post-traumatic stress disorder in the first week of their lives. Their brains never return to normal. Emotional numbing and inappropriate anger are potential common long-term effects of circumcision. Let me say that again. Emotional numbing and inappropriate anger are potential common long-term effects of circumcision. Reduced capacity for emotional expression. Those who have been violated generally have a problem with anger and direct it either inward or outward towards others. It is likely that circumcision is an unrecognized factor in the high rates of impotence in American men. Higher rates of impotence are associated with increased levels of anger and depression. Self-esteem was also lower in impotent men. Of course they're going to be impotent if you cut away all their nerve endings. Okay. The going back to ritual sacrifice of children, the Phoenicians sacrificed children. Blood sacrifice on an altar and cremation on a funeral pyre. They were called the Canaanites in the Bible. They were from Carthage. Romans tried to obliterate them. They sacrificed their best loved children to Baal and Tanit. Baal was a, was a disc and a crescent, like the Apis bull. And hmm. the blood of the child victims is collected and used to anoint the altar. They implore the favor of the gods through the blood of these sacrificed. So many of you are familiar with adrenochrome. That is a common rabbit hole for many uh, falling down the depths of the rabbit holes. Child sacrifice in ancient Israel. All firstborn males belong to Yahweh for sacrifice. All firstborn males belong to Yahweh for sacrifice. Moloch is another word for sacrifice. Yahweh was the receiver of these offerings. Baal is another term for Lord, the Lord of the Canaanites was Yahweh. Yahweh is the deity that the Moloch sacrifices are performed for. Everyone who thinks Moloch is an evil deity should take a look at Yahweh.
the Phoenicians would sacrifice the baby on a tofet. There was a covenant code law of the firstborn. Genesis 17, 10 through 12, quote, this is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every male among you shall be circumcised. All ye shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised. Among you, every male throughout your generations, end quote. Eighth day, why would a child be circumcised on the eighth day specifically to Yahweh? That is, we're speaking of the Jewish practice. And I have a... Like I said, I'm jumping around in the notes here. Because I found these things in different sources. So Exodus 22, 28. Quote, you shall give me the firstborn among your sons. You shall do the same with your cattle and your flocks. Who are the cattle? Moving on, seven days it shall remain with its mother. On the eighth day, you shall give it to me, end quote. On the eighth day, you shall sacrifice your firstborn. among your sons. So the combination of male and female is the power of creation. That point of synapse between male and female occurs at the foreskin. The foreskin of the male's penis is the synapse point where creation occurs. This is what they attack. They sever the synapse point of connection between males and females, they're severing our creation. What is the dark cult's symbol of power? It's an obelisk. What is an obelisk. It's a penis. Why do they revere the penis? Because it is the instrument of generation. It is the instrument of creation. They want to damage our instrument of creation. This is evil. Know this fact as true. Moving on. Genesis 
just as a side note, Damien Eccles, the evil child killer and dark magician, mutilated the penis of one of his victims. He removed the skin of the sack shaft and anally raped the victim. The young victim's name was Byers. It was somebody's child. Damien Eccles wanted to harvest the power of that young male. So he removed the skin of its penis, of his penis, not it. He was a child, he had a name, he had feelings, he endured that trauma and died. Lots of people think Damien Eccles is a cool artist. All you people need to fucking take a look at reality. Yes, you. Moving on. Luke 2, 21, quote, and at, and at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus. Jesus not only endured the cross, he endured this trauma as well. You should cry for him. Your hero. Oh. Chop me too. Oh, I want to be just like him. In the Talmud, there was a debate over the number of sons that must die as a consequence of circumcision before the next son may be spared. It mentioned twice. If two die, then the third child is allowed to keep his dick intact. Two children need to die before a child is allowed to keep his penis intact, according to the Talmud. Great. Sorry. Let me turn off the sound here. My device made a beep. Midrash says circumcision led to salvation. Quote, we will not descend to Gihanam because we are circumcised. Gihanam is Jewish hell. Another quote here. And on the day when the children of Israel went forth from Egypt, all the people were circumcised. Power off. Excuse my other device. I should be turning things off. Blood from circumcision was used to mark the doors of Israelites. Passover with the blood of the lamb was used to mark the door. Do you think it was a lamb? Or maybe it was the blood of their firstborn. The firstborn of the Jews got to live. The firstborn of the Egyptians had to die. Do you think that's because they, they 
because they lost their foreskins. What kind of psychopathic deity would do such a thing? That's a good question. <laughs> Moving on. God passed over to plague the Egyptians. I just mentioned that. Miamonides, Miamonides 1190 CE, quote, with regards to circumcision, one of the reasons for it is the wish to bring about the decrease in sexual intercourse. Eugenics. We all know about eugenics. You wouldn't be here if you didn't already knew, know that term. Circumcision is a practice for eugenics. The fact that circumcision weakens the faculty of sexual excitement and sometimes perhaps diminishes the pleasure is indubitable. It is hard for a woman with whom an intact man has had sexual intercourse to separate from him because it is more pleasurable for the woman to have an intact partner. Those of you women who think, ew, ugh, it looks weird. You all need to go find out what a real penis does. Not that I have one. I too have been mutilated. You can probably tell by the way that it's, it pains me to say these words. And it may, pay, it may pain many men out there to hear them, but we need to recognize the reality of what has been done so that we may change and never do that to anyone. Do no harm. It is the most pain a male can possibly feel. The most pain possible. And in a baby, it's three times. Some doctors will say, oh, he went right to sleep. He didn't feel a thing. What really happened is that baby disassociated. His little soul jumped out of his body to escape the pain. <sighs> Circumcision for Jews. Circumcision is a sign of Jewish identity. It's, uh, it's used to preserve national identity. And it endures over generations living among Gentiles resists it. it allows the Jewess to identify Jewish males to preserve bloodlines. The rabbinic period in the second to the sixth century BC, uh, CE, the common era, introduced radical change in the Brit Mala. That's what is the bris, the ceremony where a moil 
will remove the foreskin of a young victim. It originally removed only the, the skin distal to glands. So that is the very tip. It was just a proof that that the child endured the pain. And pariah is the tearing of the inner pupus off the glands with the thumbnail of the moil and removing the entire prepu the prepuce. The met sitsa is the practice of sucking the blood from the wound. This practice has a name and it's taught as correct to, from one psychopath to the next. In Mishnah, quote, they do prepare all that is needed for circumcision on the Sabbath. They, one, cut, two, tear, and three, suck, and they put on it a poultice and cumin. They wrap a rag around it, a dirty rag after they suck the blood. I told you earlier that it is the most pain and they drink the blood, the pain infused blood. All of you know exactly what I'm talking about. That is common practice and still happens today. Some rabbis have herpes on their face as they kiss the victim's bloody wound and suck the pain infused blood. As the grandfather holds open the legs and the father holds open the arms. That little baby can't run. He can't fight. Those that, are, that he knows are meant to protect him are holding him down and giving him the most pain possible. And then, I mean, this monster their loved ones are holding them down and this monster stranger comes in between the little baby's legs and he watches as this fucking monster cuts then uses a sharpened thumbnail to dig the foreskin off of the glands because a baby's penis, the glands is fused to the foreskin. It is one piece. This monster tears it open with a dirty sharpened claw. The baby feels this pain and watches it happen. Then the monster goes to bite it with his teeth. Oh my God, can you imagine what the baby is thinking 
as this fucking monster that just did this to his fucking body is putting that body part in his mouth. What do we do with our mouths? We bite and eat and tear and chew. That the subconscious of that baby knows that. So the fear is heightened exponentially as this hairy monster puts that wounded wounded baby in its mouth and sucks the blood. The baby feels it as he sucks. This is that baby's first sexual experience. I'm sure some of you out there are puking right now. But this is a fact. In order to circumcise a penis, it has to be manipulated so that it becomes erect. The doctor has to tickle the little penis so that it becomes erect before he cuts it. This is the grossest shit you've ever heard, I'm sure. But you need to hear it. Because people still do this. Children are being sick, circumcised, sacrificed right now. Right now, some baby is being mutilated. Some babies die. Some babies lose their entire penis. <sighs> Moving on. This is really hard for me. I'm sorry. I mean, this is why I didn't have a guest. Like, I, I'd be yelling at them. It... <laughs> okay. So we've established that circumcision is a substitute for child sacrifice. We've also established that it is the most pain that is possible. Uh, we've learned that the practitioners of this dark ritual drink the blood the pain-infused blood. These doctors, doctors, these psychopaths tell other doctors that it's a good idea to do this. Psychopaths like Kellogg say, write entire books promoting circumcision so that that young child doesn't grow up to try masturbating his own body. He might touch it. Oh, no. Quick, remove it. Get the knife. What kind of psychopathy does that? I mean, our society is destroyed. We, it is just now, in the late 2000s to the 2020s, the rate of circumcision has finally reached below 50% in American males. It took until now for the trend to start to wane. In the 70s, they said, don't worry, he doesn't even feel pain. 
Look at him fall asleep. I might have to play some quotes of some delusional psychopaths that think they're helping society by cutting children. Actually, let's do that now. Okay, I had to take a little break there. As I was looking through the videos, through the video to find the specific timestamp, uh, I had to walk away. I had to go take the dog for a walk. I, this is some of the hardest shit I've ever done with words, I guess. This is the hardest words I've ever had to say because I don't want to think this shit. This, this was done to me. This is one of the most glaring pieces of shadow work I have to overcome. My birth trauma affected me and I am damaged as an adult. So this is very hard for me. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, <laughs> that being said, moving along, right? So I'm going to show you an evil man and what he thinks of what this evil man thinks of people like myself who have been damaged. Let's see. There's his face. So there it is. This guy is a total piece of shit psychopath. I'll show you. What would you say to men who are angry that they were circumcised? Yeah. I'm just curious. What do I say? What I say? I'd, I'd say, get a wife. I'd say, come on. I mean, there's 120 million males in this country that I, have been circumcised and are perfectly fine. Go find another reason for your problems. Right. That's, that's what he'd tell him. Thanks, guy. We all know what that was. That was a logical fallacy. We could see his own regret, and he couldn't even say the words. He was stumbling over the words. He knows that he was damaged. Those are the words of a circumcised man that doesn't want to look at the truth. So he's going to go damage others. Let's see what else he says, this piece of shit. These accidents are extremely common. When I did a case for a young man who had had too much shaft skin removed and too much inner foreskin lining left, which resulted in a repair where there's sort of a bulge in the middle of the penis. It's a rather unsightly. Uh, his own doctor volunteered to the defense a video in which he said, well, this isn't malpractice. I repair one of these a week. Hmm. Well, of course, that does not follow merely because he repairs one a week doesn't mean it's not malpractice. Justifications much? I mean, denial of reality much? It's unbelievable that grown up humans can convince themselves of this shit. Let's listen to that, that asshole we just heard earlier. Let's hear what he has to say about this. What it means is there's a lot of malpractice. The complicated way again. to move on circumcision is about Three tenths of one percent, oh. anywhere between 0.1 and 0.5. It's nothing. Anywhere between one and two hundred, one and a thousand, eh. and they're almost all minor. Of almost course, they, all minor. Yeah, they're all minor guys. There's all maybe one in two hundred, maybe one in a thousand. It's fine. There's no medical purpose for routine infant circumcision. So why are we killing babies? 
just to make it look better. People are psychos. <sighs> okay. I'm going to stop this for a minute. Now it's just us again. Yeah. So another thing that people should know that this um, evil society does regarding circumcision, it's medically unnecessary. It violates your human rights. It damages sexuality for life. It damages your mind and emotions for life. Billions of dollars invest, billions of dollars are made harvesting foreskins. Billions of dollars are made by the pain of infant babies. I want all you vegans out there to listen. Vegetarians do no harm, right? That's your baby. I'm doing this video to save the babies. I was putting it off. I didn't want to do this shit. I'm doing it now because I have to. Advocates claim it's cleaner. But they are ignorant. For some strange reason, they believe that having an open wound in a dirty diaper is clean. Even doctors have delusions of normality supported by cultural terminology, like uncircumcised and not intact. Doctors who have been Damage themselves, damage others. In Judaism, religious rights are favored over human rights. Why is that allowed? performed without consent or anesthesia, despite overwhelming evidence of irreparable physical, sexual, and psychological harm. It precludes the possibility of ever having a normal sexual experience. It is dehumanizing. It was designed so the child will forever associate sexual pleasure with pain. And you can look at the pornography that's popular and see what kind of actions are being taken. Is pain promoted? It damages the maternal infant bond. The baby learns in its first days of life that its mother will give it away to be traumatized in the worst, uh, worst possible way. The rest of the world looks at America and Israel and our routine infant circumcision. And here's some of the, what the rest of the world thinks. This is a quote from the Royal Dutch Medical Association. Circumcision is a violation of the child's right to autonomy and physical integrity. Circumcision can and does cause complications. 
and that's as far as they go. What they really should have said is circumcision is harm and should never be done. The German Pediatric Association says this, quote, there is no medical reason to circumcise before a boy can consent, and that virtually all other pediatric societies and associations worldwide hold the AAP's views as being scientifically untenable. The Australian and New Zealand Co College of OBGYNs they're quoted as saying the AAP's technical report on circumcision is epid epidemiologically incompetent and an embarrassment to the AAP. The AAP is the American At Academy of Pediatrics. They believe, and here's a quote from them, the health benefits of circumcision outweigh the risks. Where have we heard that little gem before? Just look around. Seen any coercion lately? You've been to Walgreens lately? There's an evil push to do harm to our bodies by a psychopathic cabal of Satanists. They use lies to mind control the populace to damage themselves and their own generation. It is disgusting. And it, all it takes is for people to pay attention and say no. These supposed benefits, according to the AAP, are, in quotes, prevention of urinary tract infections and penile cancer, and transmission of STDs like HIV, unquote. There is absolutely no evidence that shows circumcision affects any of those three things. Those are lies. In no way, actually. Those are lies. We'll leave it at that. Circumcision was designed to damage people. And that's exactly what it does. It damages you for life. Moving on. We're going to take a look. We're going to hear the testimony of some real women that care. We're going to hear what they have to say. Like, I'm so, I'm so disturbed by this. I can't even bend my fingers. Like, I'm like on the verge of panic. This is, I'm like, this is as if I'm high on uppers. I'm so enraged. I feel like I'm shaking almost. It's <sighs> moving on. 105 58 seconds. Size, but he's expected to get what he wants without hitting or without um, hurting or manipulating other people. So 
there comes a time when he's going to realize that part of his body was forcibly removed. And he may have any number of reactions to that reality, but subconsciously, the truth is it's allowable for someone who's bigger than you to hold you down and do what they want to your body because it fit their opinion of what was okay to do. And so you have a real disconnect between the concept of equality and the reality. And I just don't think that it's possible for us to grow with that poison sitting there. If we want to be a real free people, like we claim that we are, we can't do that and have that underlying lesson taught at our most vulnerable time. As time goes by, it goes from just the knowledge that it's not something for my kids to moving into the activism. And then the more you know about things, the more you want to stop them. Are we cool? <laughs> Sorry. I think it's important to come with the kids too. I know there are people that say the signs are graphic. Kids shouldn't see that, but it's real and it happens. And it's hiding real. it from them, what's the point of that? My son is not even four. He knows it's wrong. He knows that it hurts the babies to do that. He gets it. He's a baby. Don't don't a baby. Yeah, that's not nice. I think we don't cut penises off because that's not nice. And this is the stuff that he says. We see the signs. Tommy, why is that baby crying? Well, it's that. Well, what's happening? And we explain that doctors tie him down and they cut off part of his penis and it hurts him a lot. And he'll say to me, it's me. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. He gets it. It hurts a woman to know that the the man you love or a man you want to love or your father or, or, you know, your best friend growing up, that someone hurt him in the worst way they could, and that nobody cared. And there are a lot of nights where I will sit up until two in the morning, reading and reading and reading and and trying to get my mind off of things. And I can't, and I'm crying, and I'm crying for my brothers, and I'm crying for my father, and and for all the boys that nobody cares to save, all the boys that, you know, if somebody would have just said, have you thought about this? Or if a doctor wouldn't have been a complete asshole and convinced the mother that she had to mutilate her son because it's necessary for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know how you can know this exists in the world and not want to stop it. In all of my flaws and all of my failings, I know that at least I didn't do that to them. I can't imagine. I don't know. I can't imagine the regret of knowing that you did that to your son and then learning that it was wrong. It's time for our culture to stop being complacent about circumcision. It's time to go out and be part of that ethical correction. So, uh, ethical correction. Well, we went into the doctor. She did this circumcision, and his penis was fine before that. I heard him scream, which was horrible. So I tried to get in there, but they had locked the door. And um, they locked the door. Once she allowed me to go in, she said that he had a concealed penis. Well, what, what I didn't know until recently is that it was a box circumcision. I had told her that um, he looked normal before. And she just said that um, basically I didn't know what I was talking about because she does this every day. The nurse said, said that to her. That this was something the doctor had done rather than something he was born with. Um, yesterday. <sighs> I knew something was wrong all along what I knew yesterday. When I was watching the speakers during Maryland, she was showing these slides. I saw my son's penis on there, concealed penis, and she said that it was a botched circumcision. What happens here is either the doctor has removed too much tissue uh, uh, um, of the foreskin. And that's when I realized what had happened. And it was, it was a really hard day for me. I... Um, I haven't had a day that hard in a long time. I I realized that I did something that my son I shouldn't have done. Uh, some right. some men feel like it is as bad as being raped. How could I have done that to my son? What if he feels that way one day? What if? I didn't have the right to do that to him.
<laughs> and I didn't know until I went to the minister conference yesterday. Yes, yeah, some of these are, are disturbing, but until we really see what circumcision is and, and the, its impact upon humans, and the, while these things may not happen very often, if it's you, it's significant. There's not a single state in the U.S. that requires outpatient circumcision reporting, and no doctor is required to report a botch. And I talk to pediatricians all the time who say, I see two, three botches a week, but, you know, what can I do? John, you're mentioning uh, no no way to track what goes on in the outpatient. There's no way to track what goes on in the inpatient either because nobody's keeping statistics. There is no nationalized system for tracking adverse events after circumcision. So we don't really know how many babies die or need antibiotics or blood transfusions or what we don't know. Yeah. I'm going to educate myself more. And um, I'm going to be an intactivist. Hear that, people? That's what real women sound like. Listen up. That's true compassion. Crying and not wanting to hear that you did something wrong to your baby. That's not compassion. That's poor me. That's don't hurt me with your words anymore. That's you being a baby. You need to confront this reality. Those of you who are listening that this applies to, you harmed your baby and he will never be the same know that moving on what are some of the lies or the what are the ways that this routine child sacrifice became prevalent in America. Bad science, hygiene as a public health concern, Victorian notions of sexual morality. Victorian mores are based in class prejudice they believe the lower class had poor hygiene, similar to the way that today the excuse for fluoridating water is because the poor have bad dental hygiene. So they have to poison all of us. And they also believe that the poor hygiene made them susceptible to diseases. Uh, Victorian mores also were, they believed that masturbation caused impaired growth, physical weakness, impotence, ulcers, epilepsy, and early death. So, with this lie loaded in the minds of all young mothers, whatever shall they do? Well, well, common um, satanic medical practice has an answer for that. Cut it off. They, in the old days, People used to believe that semen was the life force. We remember in Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove, Colonel Jack Ripper was a crazy man because he was talking about his purity of essence. He believed that his semen was his life force 
And Kubrick was showing us that that's crazy. Galen's theories of life forces and fluids. Semen was a precious substance in limited supply. Spermatoria is the seminal loss via sexual promiscuity, masturbation, or nocturnal emissions. Prevention of spermatoria. Prevailing thoughts are retraction of prepuce, pre the foreskin in boys would encourage masturbation. So cut it off. Circumcision could prevent masturbation. Public health could be improved by eliminating this cause of spermatoria. the growing Jewish influence in America. Jews thought to have superior overall health and longevity. This was the lie that people believed. And assholes like fucking, what's his name? Stefan Molyneux still believes that Jews are superior with his IQ numbers. That fucking snake needs to go to hell. Jews thought to have superior overall health and longevity, freedom from venereal disease. <laughs> what the fuck? Disinclination from criminality debauchery, and intemperance. Well, all those things must be because they're circumcised, right? So chop my baby up, please. Fucking crazy. Circumcision in modern times, under the Jewish influence, increasing numbers of influence of Jew Jewish physicians Abraham Wolbarst, 1914, said it's sanitary. In quotes, a great aid to cleanliness, end quote. Abraham Ravick and Ernest Widener, no, Winder. Abraham Wolbarst, universal circumcision as a sanitary measure from the American Medical Association, the Jewish American Medical Association, 1914, quotes, a great aid to cleanliness. Another quote, prophylaxis against a variety of venereal diseases, end quote. Another one, quote, diminishes tendency to masturbation, end quote. Well, this is a doctor saying it. It must be true, right? He's the priest. He wears the robes. Another quote, it is the moral duty of every physician to encourage circumcision in the young Those are the words of evil. Is circumcision the prophylactic against penile cancer? 1926, he says, the prepuce, these are quotes, the prepuce is an ideal cancer grower, end quote. Quotes, it furnishes and retains the essential irritating secretions which accumulate in the preputial pre cavity and there fructify into a full blossomed cancer. Well, that sounds like some scientific jargon. It must be real, right? Another quote here the prepuce 
is absolutely dangerous and a serious menace to present day man. What the fuck? Who talks like that? This is a body part. Abraham Rev Ravik was inf influenced the relation was talked much about the influence of circumcision to cancer of the prostate in the Journal of Urology 1942. Basically they had they used fear of disease to coerce parents to mutilate their children. Isn't that similar to what's happening all around us? People are being damaged by people in white costumes with a needle. And they're fed lies to make them consent to this needle. It's a fang. It's a tooth with venom. They stab you two times. Think about that. Modern medicine is satanic. You know this already. I'm just stating the obvious. It is a satanic ritual. The practice of circumcision is a satanic ritual. It is a practice that is done by Satanists and it's a routine in America. That's not surprising, is it? America is the den of snakes. Eric Klopper, a uh, uh, warrior on the side of good, says this, the circumcised penis is the end result of a blood sacrifice from an ancient tribe intending to damage our sexuality, end quote. He gets it. That's the reality. We are in a culture of sexual violence. Look at the TV. Look at the movies. What is it? Sex, violence. What is trauma-based mind control? What is satanic ritual abuse? Sex, violence. Program. Inculcating. Learned helplessness. Robotic behaviors, the eradication of free will. That's what this is. Like I said before, it took until the 70s for people to recognize that infants feel pain. What the fuck, man? The baby's born. I mean, you knock him on the head, he goes, ow, cries. But if you chop his penis, that's fine. Like, he doesn't feel pain. Like, people, this is crazy. Anyway, <clears throat> this PTSD, it creates neural, neuronal pathways that burn in, that connect sex and violence. Look at our culture. Creates monsters. Distrust is a common side effect. <laughs> common effect. The foreskin has 80 to 100,000 Meisner corpuscles.
one other thing that I, that's very important that parents need to know about their young babies, especially parents who have been circumcised and do not know how to care for a, a intact penis. You need to know that retraction of the foreskin is wrong. Never retract the foreskin. You never need to clean inside the foreskin. That is a common misconception that doctors still run on today. They tell mothers that have intact babies, oh, at about one year old, now it's fine. You can retract it and clean in there. Wrong. I am stating the truth. Whoever says that, no matter what costume he wears, he is stating lies. You never need to clean inside. You never need to put soap on it. It is a self-cleaning organ. Plus, the baby's glands is fused to the foreskin. If you retract it, it will tear. It will cause damage. Sometimes more damage than could be done with a circumcision itself. Hear my words. Remember those facts. A common phrase that mothers use, only clean what is seen. And don't even use soap. I mean, clean around, you know, they, they poop in their diapers and shit, you know, clean around. But you don't need soap on the tip of his penis. Human rights are irrepressible. This routine child sacrifice must end, and it will end. When humanity recognizes reality and awakens to their compassion, circumcision will end. That's about all I want to say today. I'm going to leave you with some words of a mother who has regret. And we all need to hear this. This is what real regret sounds like. This is real compassion. So, back to this film, American Circumcision from 2017. We'll end with this jerk off. Okay, fine. Go find another reason for your problem. Fuck that piece of shit. Right, though. Yeah. Three of my sons suffered a torture and mutilation. Torture. Uh, Mutilation. Because some doctor lied to me. If I stop doing this work, oh, I'm going to cry. If I if I stop doing this work, I think about my babies on that board. So, uh, how do you apologize to children for doing this? How could you possibly say enough? I'm sorry. You can't. So I do the work, and and in that is the healing. I don't know. It's, it's not healing. I don't. You don't get over this. You don't get over it. But you can make a difference. 
<laughs> we can make a difference. That's your job now. You heard these words. Now you know the truth. Go make a difference. Thank you. I love you. <laughs>